In the making of a human being, there is one dimension of us which is made for survival. Once you start looking, you know, this happens to you or if you… the moment you go to school, somebody around you, your parents, your teachers, everybody is trying to tell you, you got to be better than somebody next to you. The moment this aspiration enters your mind, after that, your entire process of life will become survival because Surviving in this world is not a big deal, everybody can survive. But the moment you get into this madness that you want to survive better than somebody, then you're a gone case. Till the last breath, <laughs> till the last moment of your life, you will be only fighting for survival. This is what is happening to majority of the world. You can see this distinctly. As societies get more affluent, they are not more at ease. They are fighting for survival like nobody. Actually, those who have little tribal cultures, <laughs> they are at ease. If they had their meal, they are quite okay. But affluent societies on the planet are an overdrive of survival. It's just that they've raised the bar of survival in such a way, it is unreachable because it keeps going up all the time because somebody else is always doing better than you. Endlessly it goes on. This one step, <laughs> they've already done it to you. If you don't de do this one thing to your children, that you didn't put this idea that they must survive better than somebody, if this one idea if you don't put into your children, you've done a very great thing, very, very great thing. What it means is, if you did not put this one corruption into your child's mind, that means you prepared a field where in the next generation, Millions of enlightened… Mi enlightened beings may happen, millions. Because if human beings are released from this one disease, that they want to be better than somebody, rest is… life comes to ease by itself. If this life comes to ease, seeing what is there, is a natural process. But Sadhguru, I am not competing with anybody in the ashram. <laughs> but I don't see any light bulbs coming up. We must always understand between possibility and reality, there is a distance. The distance need not be great. It is just that even to cover a short distance, you must hold the course. This is the problem with most people. If you observe yourself in twenty-four hours' time, you would have changed the direction of your life a thousand times. Right, left, center, everything would have happened. A man was driving in the United States in a… a bit of a remote kind of country road. And then his car stopped because he had a flat tire. Then he walked down to a farm and he asked the farmer, how far to the gas station? The farmer said, well, 
Well, as a crow flies, it's just four miles. Then the city bloke looked at him and then he said, suppose the crow has to roll a flat tire and go how far? This may be the problem, you have a flat tire. And to roll it and to keep the course, every day it keeps changing many, many, many times. When I say it changes many times. So you woke up in the morning. Morning, uh, <laughs> unless uh, you are on a certain level of sadhana, morning in yoga center you woke up with a start because dong, dong. If you wake up like this, of course, first you don't wake up spiritually, you wake up with a curse. And you cannot even say it loudly because there is somebody else who is sitting, shambho, shambho. Already, <laughs> before you wake up, somebody is sitting up and doing ch, 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 ch. <laughs> You slept through all that, but this gong is too jarring, you can't ignore that thing. So you woke up and uh, we don't know what all happens, the toothbrush, you shove it into your nose, all kinds of things happen, lack of coordination, you know. Then, 5.30 you get spiritual <laughs> So you get spiritual, 5.30, 5.45, 6 o'clock, Till then there's some activity, Guru Puja, then Surya Kriya, something. Then comes the best part. <laughs> now, now, those of you watching us on the web, don't believe all this. Everybody is doing wonderful sadhana. Ah. I shouldn't have come with a sail. Hmm? <laughs> and uh, then of course uh, there are people monitoring the sadhana, All that happens and again you get little spiritual, Shambhavi. Then you know what happens step by step, so many things. So in a day, just watch how many times your direction and priorities change. All you have to try to do is just this, next twenty-four hours. Just stay with one priority, absolutely, without shifting for a moment. You will see wonders will happen in twenty-four hours' time. Because you have the right kind of practice, there's phenomenal energy. Well, I am also still here. If something significant starts happening, I won't ignore you. I'll be right there. So, everything is there, it's just that holding the direction. <laughs>